Hey everybody, welcome back. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to be making the center PVC bow core, so to speak, for the uh, for this bow with the wooden sias that we're building. So what you want to do is you want to start off with a piece of PVC pipe. So this is a uh, 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe and it's this one is 34 inches long. The way you figure out the length is you take the length of your sias. So what we're going to try and do is we want the total length of all the flat pieces to be 48 inches on this particular style. If you want a lower weight bow, then you want it to be a little longer if you want a. Um, but this is about as short as you want to go. I wouldn't go any higher on this type of bow as the strain is just going to be too great on the PVC pipe. So once you've got your pipe, what you want to do is you want to mark on the handle and to mark center and then mark two inches on either side. So this is going to be your handle section. So when you grip the bow, you're actually either going to grip here, this way, or this way. And we'll, we'll figure out the balancing issues later on, but for right now, this bow, the handle goes right in the middle. And then on either side, you want to actually mark two inches in. And that's going to tell you where you're going to start your splice for your uh, sears. So once you have your PVC pipe, all you're going to need is a heat source. Now, I've shown in my other video how to use a stove top. And that's great if that's all you've got. You can use, uh, I find that gas is better than electric. Uh, you could use a torch, but a torch has a tendency to really burn the PVC and you don't want to burn it. It's going to release a lot more fumes than you need to. Uh, I would suggest getting a heat gun. Uh, just pretty much any type of heat gun would work. And uh, I'm going to show you a good way of using the heat gun. It's a little different than using a stove top. It's a little more versatile. And then you're also going to need a flattening jig. So this flattening jig is really simple. All it is is it's a piece of pine. So it's a four foot long piece of pine that's one that's a one by four inch piece, which actually means it's about three quarters of an inch thick and it's about three and a half inches wide. And then on one side you want to put spacers. So for this particular bow with a three quarter inch pipe, you want your spacers to be three quarters of three quarter inch tall. So that, that's gonna push the pipe in a little bit and then give us that initial taper. And you want this to be four feet because it'll give you the nice taper that you need. So once you've got your flattening jig, your pipe, and your heat gun, we can get started. So now we're gonna heat this up. So what you wanna do is you wanna bring your you wanna bring your uh, pipe onto a flat heat resistant surface. So this is a good laminate floor. If you've got wood or carpet, I don't suggest doing this. You get yourself a, a good wood board to heat on so you're not going to burn anything. Or you can do this outside on concrete. The good thing about the heat gun is it allows you to take your uh, pipe onto a flat surface which allows you to retain a lot more heat that would get lost if you used a, uh, another heat source or if you had to hold the pipe up in the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to pass the heat gun over the pipe and just you know keep going until it gets nice and pliable and then we're going to take this flattening jig bring it over the tip line it up with that handle mark and press it flat so i'm going to show you how to do that now so you just want to go And gently go back and forth and heat up this section. You don't want to stay too long in one spot. And you should also do this outside or with good ventilation because the fumes are not good for you. 
And also make sure that when you handle this pipe, you have some sort of uh, heat resistant glove or heavy towel to work with. Because this is going to be very hot and you could get burned really bad. So now you can see it's got a nice even bend and it's really pliable. So you just want to give it one more heat and then you want to get it straightened out and lined up. And then you quickly want to bring your flattening jig over. You want to apply pressure. And you want to apply most of your pressure right into the center of this space here so that you not only get the nice taper here, but there's a little more flattening going on right in here. That's just going to help the bow balance out. So it's going to take a little while. You just let it cool slowly because once it's kind of set, we can pull it out of this and then we can kind of tweak it and make sure everything's straight. I'm just moving it to another section of floor so it can cool a little more. So now you can see it's got a nice taper going this way and it's got a nice even taper going this way. So now the next thing you want to do is you want to actually look down and see if it's straight. So as you can see it's, it's largely straight going all the way down. And you can see what I mean where it's got the taper and a little more of a pinch here. So, just want to make sure it's straight. All right. So we haven't needed to do any adjustments on this one. So now all you need to do is flip this around and heat up the other side. So I'll do that and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so once your second limb is soft, what you want to do is as you're putting this jig on here, you want to make sure to put some pressure and make sure the other limb is perfectly flat on the ground. The reason why you want to do this is you're going to save yourself a lot of headache later because if your limbs don't line up now, the only way to really fix it would be to twist your handle and that's going to give you a lot of problems as both of your limbs are going to be twisted and it's not going to line up straight. It wouldn't be so bad if we were making a long bow or a light recurve, but with a heavily recurved and reflexed bow like this, it could cause problems. Okay, so now that you've got both limbs flattened, you can see it's fairly straight. It's got a little bit of a, you know, side to side to it, but it's not that bad. You know, we can figure that out once the bow's finished. So now what we want to do is, if you can see right here, there's a spot where the flattening jig created these sharp creases. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently heat up the handle, the whole handle, and what's going to happen is the pipe is going to return to round a little bit. So we just want to do that until this disappears, and then we're going to actually smash the handle with our uh, special heat resistant towel here just enough so that it becomes a comfortable grip in the hand and it'll also cut down on the deviation of the arrow going over the rest so I'm gonna start the heat gun okay. 
So now you can see it's starting to get really flexible. So you want to concentrate the heat on these two sides. And now you can see that that shot crease is pretty much gone from both sides. So now we're going to do a couple things. First, you want to flex the handle forward a little bit. So when you hold it on the ground, you want maybe two inches this way. But you can deal with that after. What you want to do now is actually smash this handle portion. And you want to keep your flattening mainly between the two black lines. Like I said, you want about two inches in front. And then now you want to go and you want to make sure that the tips line up straight. So you just want to keep it there and hold it there for a little bit until it cools down. So if you turn off the heat gun, move that aside. And I just like, instead of uh, rapidly cooling this, the best way to do this is just to hold it and watch it. You know, check a couple times because you just want to be able to adjust it all the way until it can no longer be adjusted. Okay. So here you can see there's a nice flex in the handle here. And what that does is it brings the tips forward. So what we've done is we've put a setback or a reflex in the handle. And then we've also made the handle a little narrower than the rest of the bow. So you'll have a nice place to put your hand and grip it. And also know that at this point, it's still very, really very hot. So if you're going to grip the bow, you need to use your heat resistant gloves. Otherwise you could seriously burn yourself. No? All right. So now that this is finished, this is what your bow core will look like. So we're all done here. All we got to do now is put the uh, is splice in the sias, and we'll do that in the next video. So thanks for watching.